Hey guys, thanks for joining me this week. Uh, when we parted ways last week, uh, we had just gotten uh, chosen our piece of wood for our hickory board self bow. Uh, got it laid out and uh, ready for the belly reduction piece of work. Uh, and that's what we're going to get started on today. Uh, choosing to do something a little bit different or maybe maybe more to the point of not using some of the tools that I'm accustomed to using or your ear or that you're accustomed to seeing me use in terms of tapering tools and etc. So I'm, I will not be using uh, my tapering jigs, uh, drum sanders, those sorts of things. I will be using more of a belt sander. And so hopefully these are tools that uh, you have in your garage and something that you could use if you wanted to follow along. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, hang in there. We're going to get started right now. All right, guys, let's take a quick minute to talk about the preparation of our board uh, before we even get started. Uh, the very first reduction or treatment that we should be giving our board bow, and when you choose to do a self bow out of the board, is you have got to get the back surface or the surface that you have designated as your back uh, sanded very smooth. Uh, additionally, you want to take and radius off your edges, right? So we do not want hard corners on our back reaching over to the edge, all right? So again, that's just an opportunity for a splinter to rise and cause a failure uh, with the bow as we're tilling. This right here is the center of the bow, the geographical center. And we wanna take and designate uh, which limb is going to be the top from the bottom. And I have decided that this, this down here is gonna be the bottom limb, all right? And uh, bottom limb is always under a little more strain than the top limb, okay? And generally speaking, a little more of your grip is going to uh, reside on your lower limb. Your arrow pass is gonna be a little closer to the geographical center uh, than uh, on, the, on your top limb, all right? So, I want to I want to do a four inch grip, and what I'm going to do is actually measure up about one and a half inches, right, and then measure back down the four inches. Now that does not that doesn't change the length of the limbs by very much, and the reason I'm not changing them by very much is because it's such a short bow, and we don't have a whole lot of a whole lot of room to work with, so. In doing this, it's going to make my top limb uh, one inch longer than the bottom. Okay, uh, and on a short bow, that's what we're that's kind of what we're after. So here's the finished product of what I'm getting ready to glue on. So you can see I tapered them all the way out to their ends here, and the idea is to make that transition from riser to uh, limb is easy to manage when it comes time to uh, blending those together. Uh, so I am going to uh, go ahead and get this glued on now. Uh, just a word of advice before you get started, remove all of your pencil lines here because they will be under your glue uh, when you glue this on and as you start removing and if you got any feather to your glue line You're gonna see your pencil line on the underside. Uh, I am going to be tillering this with uh, The same methods that Dean Tor just shows in his book of hunting the Osage bow and what that's going to be is Take its faceted tillering We're going to take our corners off and continue to work our corners down until we start getting some bend and then work the crown of that belly down. Now, as we take down the, the corner edges, we are taking down weight. And as we work the belly, we're working tiller. Okay. And to start the process, we're going to take a pencil, uh, line it up to a finger here so it's right at the top of our, our surface of our belly and we're going to track it along the length here, slowly tilting it forward out to the end. And you can see that I started right here at the thickness or the thickest part. And we slowly graduated as we went down 
to take off, you know, maybe about an eighth of an inch down here. All right, that's just a very slow taper. And the idea here is to work our, work our corners down to that line and then flatten out the, the belly side. Okay, now, if this were a little thicker, that would make a lot more sense. Okay, uh, that you're, you're establishing like a peak down the center of the, the belly and you would then take the peak off. Uh, but in this instance, we're, we're already pretty flat. We just want to establish something of a little bit of a crown for our faceted tillering so we can take off weight on our edges and tiller along the belly. Okay, so maybe in the light, hopefully in the light, you can see that I've got an edge forming here, edge forming here, and then a flat spot along the belly. And we'll continue to run that line down and approach the back of the bow until we've tapered it such that we get a good even bend on floor tiller. So, you know, when you're addressing this on the sander, the way I tend to do it is I address, you know, I'll take some off the tip here and then run back, hit the tip again, then run a little further up the limb, come back to the tip, run a little further up the limb, come back to addressing the wood up here at the tip, and then all the way down to the to the grip area, and then all the way back. And what that does is it kind of in stages takes more more wood off at your tip as uh, as opposed to as you move toward the grip there. Um, just kind of a gross way of getting this done. Now remember, all we're shooting for is, is floor tiller here, guys. So all we need to do is get this bending somewhat evenly so we can move to hand tools and start doing some fine tillering with this, this particular stave. Set this down on the workbench and kind of show you what we're dealing with in terms of setback here on this particular bow. Uh, or on the stave, at least. And... We'll put a measure to it so we can kind of tell where we're going as far as uh, strain is concerned. So we are just at that half inch mark, right at the half inch mark. That is something that that is a measure we'll keep track of as we move along, uh, just to measure the strain and see what kind of set we're taking how much strain that, that bow is under. And as, as we start to show string follow and, and set, uh, that is where we will need to really address how to move forward. So if we start taking extreme amounts, we'll, we may need to uh, pivot a little in our approach. As we start taking off our edges and then the center and take off our edges and then the center, and we kind of concentrate that work, you know, more so out here, a little more, a little more, and then on, on the way up, uh, you begin to get a nice tapered, you begin to see that taper occur in your limb, and you can feel it with your fingers, uh, thick to thin, and your fingers are more accurate than any caliper would ever be at feeling that. Now, I don't know if you recall, when I started on this particular board, I had rough sawn surface on here. Uh, it is all but gone. I mean, it's all gone. Uh, we're getting a pretty smooth surface on our belly. And uh, here's where we are at floor tiller. I kind of took it through another removal similar to uh, the first round, just kind of doubled up on it, did a similar one. And we're really kind of starting to get a good springy brent, uh, bend out of this thing. Now, we're not approaching a 40 or 50 pound class bow resistance. This is still very, very tough to bend. Uh, putting a lot into it to get that bend, but we can see that, that that bend is beginning to 
even out over the length of these limbs. And so a little more, a little more gross removal, and then uh, and then we'll we'll see about trying to get this guy maybe uh, maybe on a long string and on the tillering stick. Uh, word of caution: when you're using power tools, you can uh, very easily dig out a section of a limb and ruin your bow all at one time in three seconds on a on a sander. And that's why it's very important to start at your extremes, either out at the tip or up at the grip, more, more likely out at the tip, and just kind of run, run even, evenly across. Now the other thing that, that aids in that is that we are, we are working edges and then we're working a flat surface. And that goes a long ways to protecting you from accidentally digging out if you were to try and maintain a completely flat surface all the way down the length of this limb. Uh, very quickly you could roll out a divot and you have either ruined your bow or made a 30 pound bow out of a 60 pound bow in that one uh, what you have created as a hinge. Uh, I'm just going to continue now at this point the way that, the way this runs is I've got what I believe is a good taper on here. I'll just do a parallel line mark all the way down, take it down to that line and then flatten the surface. That's how this, this is played at this point. Um, I'm going to do it until, until we are, until I am feeling confident that we are in the right weight class to get started on a long string. And so here's kind of the backlight, if you can make it out, on this limb. And as you follow it down, of course, all of these facets will kind of work toward, uh, you know, pointing, just running to the tip. Can't find my fingers in the viewfinder here. Uh, and so you can kind of use those, uh, use them as guideposts for where you are on the taper of your limb. So you would want to have a good, your, your center facet should be the same size uh, as the out, line of your limb right and so if your center facet gets really wide in one point and then narrow in another then you know you're starting to get some dishing going on in that limb uh, so those can actually lend to uh, helping you see your progress toward a good taper um, I want to also talk about the fact that we have been floor tillering this a bit and I am still oh doggone light we are still holding a half inch of setback all right so that is really kind of the goal here is if we regiment our um, approach to coming to the string and we regiment our approach to tillering and constantly only go as far with the strain as it takes to get to the next step, right? So we don't want to overstrain these limbs by stringing this bow too early or we'll lose that setback. We'll, we'll strain these limbs too much. There'll be too much wood in the mix for the finished bow. We want to get as close to our weight before we ever put a string on it. So knowing what, uh, knowing what a, you know, 40 or 50 pound class bow uh, feels like it floor so I've got to continue working this down to get that flex a little easier and in doing so I will make sure or will do as much to uh, retain that setback to this degree before we ever even put a string on it product so uh, something else to to uh, bring up I've been using power tools and it should seem reasonable enough that you can put this shape on a limb with a rasp. You know, you just run a rasp on down the way and then you run a rasp on down the way and then you run it right across the top there. All right, and one of the things you can do with a rasp, well, so now we can kind of see that facet pretty well in the shape or with the lighting. So there you go, there's a pretty good view of it. Okay. Um, 
You can take the rough edge of a rasp over your edges and then come back with the smoother file side of a rasp so that you can really kind of see where you're going uh, in terms of progression toward floor tiller. Hopefully this is all fitting in the screen, you guys. Here we are on a long string, uh, first time bending it on a tillering stick. And we seem to be getting decent, what I would consider to be relatively decent bend in those limbs. Might be a little bit stiff right in here. Um, this, this is the lower limb. Actually seems to be bending pretty well. This upper limb seems to be just kind of straight in through here a little bit more so than on the other side. So I'll probably hit it with the hit it with the belt sander right there. All right, so uh, gave this probably six or seven passes on the uh, belt sander. Try and get it to catch up to this side. I'm going to get us a little closer here and just kind of take a look down this view here so you can kind of see what we're dealing with in terms of the bend along these limbs. So you can see that we are doing all right as far as getting some some bend along those lengths. So really at this point, it's just a matter of getting it strung up and brought to brace height. All right, so here we are strung for the very first time. It's not very deep, maybe uh, two, two and a half inches there as far as a string height on that. Uh, one of the first things we want to check out, when we get it up first, is do we have any twists or any problems along those lines? And it does not appear as though we have any major twisting going on, at least not on the onset or the outset, whatever. Uh, something I am noticing, I'm trying to figure out how to uh, manage this since I put a little riser right there, is that our bend right through the middle of that bow and you can see it on the long view. It's just really flat, really flat through the middle section, the grip section of this bow. We do not want any flat sections. Every portion of this bow has to be working in order to get a full draw out of it. And so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work there around the grip, uh, probably narrow it at this point, just a smidge little bit on each side and then start taking some wood down so that we can get it bending a little more uh, and until I do them that I'm not going to string it any higher uh, here's the plan going to come in come in just a little bit and narrow it right here maybe by eighth of an inch on each side All right kind of incorporate the fades in there remember we wanted to get just a little deeper so we had you know, a little better purchase on this bow with the palm of our hand. Um, but it seems that we've got a little too much, too much girth going on in here. So I'm going to start working on that next. Okay, I now have this strung to about three and a half, almost four inches. And you can see just that ever slight hourglass right at the grip that coincides with the riser. Now this riser I have taken down quite a bit. So it's still thick right, right at the top, but it is really starting to blend into the rest of the tapering. Uh, and you can see down the length that it is starting to take a bend right through that grip. So I'm going to get this strung just a little bit higher and see what it looks like. Okay guys, um, I'm going to call this brace height. It is probably about a six inch 
brace. I'm not dealing with too much twist in the limbs. The string is tracking well. Uh, everything seems to be coming together here. Um, get a view of it from this direction here. So, actually, let's see if I can't put this back here. I'm feeling pretty good about the bend those limbs. I'm sorry it's very busy in the background. I'll try to keep this thing in place here so maybe we can see what we're dealing with. It's still a little flat through that grip area and I have done a lot to take this down. There is just not not much to it anymore. Um, you know, I'm expecting about three inches there in the center maybe to be static. And it seems to rock on the table pretty well right there. So I think I'm getting some decent bend. Um, what we're going to do now is allow this to just sit here strung for half an hour. Okay, guys. All the way up to this point, I uh, have only been working on this bow with uh, power tools. And have been working the faceted tillering process. So taking material off these, the corners here, and then running a single uh, surface across the center of the limb. Okay, so uh, have only been running it through the uh, sander, okay, the belt sander, and a little bit on the spindle sander, but primarily on the belt sander. I, I use the spindle sander to kind of do some work in here because it's a little finer work. But uh, this has been primarily the belt sander. All right. Uh, finally got it to uh, the string. And it has been sitting here now for exactly half an hour. And so what we're going to do now is go ahead and unstring it. I just kind of see what we're dealing with in the way of strain on these limbs. Remember that it had a, a half inch of setback when we got started. So this is just Just unstrung. And we are showing it's down to about a, a quarter of an inch of setback. That's what we've got left there. So I'm going to pick you up here and take it down and show you. Well, this is fresh, fresh off the string. All right, so we still, we have not even gotten it to lose but maybe a quarter inch of that setback. So we are still in really good shape as far as uh, stress on this belly. Um, up to this point, and I think you should be able to see it in the light on that limb. We are still very pronounced in our faceted tillering. So there it is. Okay, here's the back, as smooth as we could get it, rounded over on its corners here, but the belly faceted right through the grip. So you can see that facet even running over the handle section, the riser section. At this point, and since it is up to the string, we pretty much will turn now all to hand tools. This is the part where you graduate to hand tools. Now, I'll probably use um, the sander to narrow these tips because obviously the tips are way too, way too thick here or too wide. 
right? And, and we left them wide in case the bow started twisting or anything weird like that, that we could kind of maneuver the, the tips and ensure that the, the string is aligned over the grip. But uh, uh, we did not have any troubles with that from the get-go. Uh, and as we go along and start tweaking this bow out, we'll start narrowing these tips out. And we'll want to do that a little earlier because it does affect the bend of the, the limb to some degree. All right, so thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I appreciate your time this week. Sorry, the video is probably going to be a little long because I'm getting to this part and realizing that I have a lot of videos to edit together. Uh, and if you hung, hung with me this long, thank you for, for uh, your time and attention, and I will see you next week.